at the highest level of relating with your kids, if you want to like figure out the highest level of relating with your kids, is being able to predict their next action. So, like I said, the bottom level is being able to be aware of like being curious about their interests online. What are they doing online? Being like insanely curious about that. The next level is being able to predict what would the thing, what would they watch next that would help them further their goal. And then the, the, the top stage would be, what are they gonna do? <laughs> what would they do next? And this one is, is particularly important, but it's also particularly hard to do. And the reason for that is, because like it's like predicting the future. What are people going to do? It's like the same as the other level. But we we behave in in very predictable ways. And one of the questions that I might ask is, what action would your child take if they were on this system, right? Like the the area that they're really interested in. Let's call it the digital playground. And someone said something hurtful to them online, somebody hurt them online, what would they do? Would they withdraw? Or would they react in anger? Would they like start messaging them back? You know, it, it's okay to say, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I think that being aware of their interests is not enough in today's world. That's kind of like saying our kids are like they're into playgrounds or they're into playing. <laughs> like it's too generic to be to be useful. How do we go deeper? How do we go farther? I know this this is now we're moving into uncomfortable territory, right? Because uh just as it's uncomfortable uh to talk to our kids about sex and drugs. Uh, but we do it anyways, because we know what the consequences are of not talking about this. In the same way, uh, it can be uncomfortable talking about what happens online. Because there are some really, really tough and terrible stuff that happens online. It's uncomfortable. But we still have to do it for exactly the same reasons. Because it isn't a matter of like if somebody says something negative to them online, it's a matter of when. I mean, it's a playground, right? Like people beat each other up on playgrounds. This is normal behavior, right? People don't act like civilized individuals online in the same way because we're in this, like many kids feel like they're in this world of no consequence. I can say whatever I want. I remember hearing, a free country. I can say what I want. What are you going to do to stop me? Very common. Very common. Right? And so, so when somebody who has that attitude says that to your child, what happens? This is one of the, the hardest things, um, the, the hardest aspects to, to do. And often as, as parents, we don't see the effects of this until it's it, it is far too late. And the whole reason for relating is to be able to hit this aspect, like the whole goal of this, this triangle is to be able to hit this aspect first, hit it early, hit it before it actually happens. And it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's just like getting hurt, maybe even getting punched. Uh, I remember getting punched. <laughs> in the playground. I mean, these are these are not friendly places, right? Like these are these are tough places. These are tough places to be in. But we do it anyways. We do it anyways, because this is this is the world that we live in. And one of the things I, I mentioned previously about AI consciousness, unconsciousness, is that really a lot of the stuff that you see on the internet, <laughs> it drives to one of two outcomes. Right or to one of two unconscious desires, sex and aggression. Right, like if you think about like the Freudian uh, psychoanalysis, what is the emphasis? 
in Freudian psychoanalysis. It is sex and aggression. And so I, I take any, any social media site, right? Mm, Twitter, <laughs> for example. What is, the, what is the unconscious desire that it optimizes for? It's aggression. Yeah, it's aggression. In the same way, um, let's say TikTok, right? TikTok, you know, there's a lot of push for TikTok to be to moved up to 16 years of age. Um, is, is the unconscious desire that is driving TikTok, is that sex or is it aggression? Mm, mostly sex. So you can see like what is happening these days, especially when it comes to the online space. Uh, you can see like it's going to move towards aggression. You're playing this game. It, like it's naturally going to move towards aggression. Like this is, this is an expected behavior. People are going to say mean things about you online. And how can you predict what they're going to do? Well, you talk to them about it. Maybe you watch what they did. Like sometimes, um, th like a physical example would be like, I know that when my son is playing with toys, if he's building something, creating something, and then the, the younger one comes in and he it gives it a nice like Taekwondo kick or a punch and he, it, he smashes the thing. I know. I know he's going to react in anger. He's going to punch back, right? He's going to say, no way. Uh-uh. You don't do this to me. Right? And he's going he's gonna to react in anger. I know this. And so if you know how they're going to react, then we can start thinking about, again, this is the same thing as what I was saying. Like, if you can influence what they view, you can influence what the, how they act as well. And that's where the real the real specialty for relating comes in. You see, like, if you can redirect what they, they watch, how much harder would it be to redirect? Like, we want them to do this. And we, we like, but you, you don't even know what, you don't, like, you want me to do all these things, but you don't even know who, well, like, what I, I like. You don't, you don't even know a lot of things about me. Like, I'm, I'm becoming more and more distanced to you. And so, Relating is about getting closer and closer. Yes, we're saying, yeah, we got, we got your interests. I am, I'm deeply interested in your interests. And not only that, I have some ideas for how you can improve and get closer to your goal of whatever your goal is on that online system. Let me help you achieve it. Then you're seen as complimentary. Then you see you're seen as I am helping you achieve your goal. So that when you ask them to do some kind of action, especially an online action. Somebody says something mean to you online, and how would I respond to it? Well, I mean, how do you think Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, would respond to this? What would he say? Would he get angry? Would he just start blasting people? See how calm and cool this guy is, right? Like, model his behavior, right? Like, maybe we, we have an opportunity to connect their interests to where they want to go. And then it becomes really hard because um, their interests are part of their identity. Rejecting their interests and saying that it's junk is almost rejecting their identity of who they, they're trying to figure out who they are. They're trying to figure out what they are interested in. And so we're rejecting that. <laughs> we're rejecting that when we say, oh, you know, like that, that stuff, don't watch that stuff. That's, that's all junk. We have an opportunity to direct them. Like we could say, like we, we can feel, <laughs> we, can, we can certainly feel like it's junk, but we can also, if we are showing interest in it, we can redirect them to the stuff that is good, <laughs> right? And go, well, that's not that interesting, but this is, take a look at this one. This is way more interesting for you. You're gonna learn way more if you watch this. That's an opportunity. It's a unique opportunity. To, to grow in this space and to also be able to have that level of influence where pretty much whatever they do, like they, they're really looking to you for, for that guidance because you've helped them like get closer to their goal and they know that if they follow what you're, you're telling them to do, that they're going to reach their own interests uh, a lot quicker. You've created a type of relationship, uh, like a bond that, yeah, how do I say this? Um, <laughs> 
th this is really important for your legacy. Yet you're investing, you're investing in the long term of your legacy as a parent. Because long after you're dead and gone, the only thing that's really going to remain is those lessons, those values that you shared. Uh, I often say that if you want to be smart, go to school. There's lots and lots of stuff that you can learn at school. But if you want to be wise, go to funerals. Go to funerals and see what do people say about the person who has died? What does their family say about the person who died? It's almost never about their work. It's never about, oh, they did this job for like 30 years. No. It, it was like that one moment that they showed how to be a better person. It was that one moment that they showed, hey, you can believe in yourself. You can do things that you never thought possible. It's those small little moments that change the, direct, the, the trajectory of a child's life. And you have a direct opportunity to have a huge influence on what those moments are. But you have to start. You have to start with that relationship. You have to start with showing an interest, like what it means is sacrifice. You know, like we as parents are no, no strangers to sacrifice. Sacrifice everything for our kids, our time, our sleep, our attention, our jobs, our career, you name it. We sacrifice for our kids. That's what we do. And, you know, I'm just adding one more thing, <laughs> one more thing onto your list of sacrifice. Uh, it means I have to like show like show some interest in Roblox. It means I have to show some interest in Elsa. It means I have to show some interest in the topics that they care about. But in so doing, you build a such a su like a, such a strong foundation of that relationship, that, that relationship triangle, that you become like anything that you say becomes like legacy. That makes sense. It's like when you build that foundation of relationship, everything that you say is going to become legacy.